Hi everybody, my name is Rochelle and welcome to another video of the Gertzwalds. I am so excited for this week's video. So I love baking and this week we are in charge of some treats for everybody. So we have some fun ones in store for you. Um, every time that we have to do treats, whether it's for dance class or daycare or any sort of event, I always like to try to get our toddler involved. She is three now, her name is Emerson, and anytime that I get her in the kitchen, she just gets so excited, she begs to help, and she just loves it. So I think it's a lot of fun. It also teaches her a lot of different motor skills and things like that. So we have tons of fun treats for you to see. Now I will caution you, none of them are really super healthy, but um, with the fun fall weather, we wanted to do some pumps. So please stay tuned and see what we get into. All right, so for our first treat this week that we made, we made frozen yogurt pumpkin bites. Now I must say these Frozen yogurt bites of any sort are also a huge hit in my house. Emerson is absolutely in love with these, and she can go right into her freezer, grab them, and have them as a quick, easy snack. They're actually not too bad either. You can add any ingredients that you want. What we chose to do this time was pumpkin puree, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of vanilla extract, and then some honey. I have done this with other... Um, purees before. You can purchase the purees in the can or you can make your own just using a blender. We've done things like apples, which you can just um, boil some apples, cook them up, add some cinnamon, and then puree those up. Or you can do it with a ton of other fruits or vegetables, peaches, anything like that, that you can pretty much blender into like a puree texture. Um, but for this week, since we are going with the fall theme, we um, did the pumpkin puree one. Once you've got your ingredients all mixed up together, you just put them into a little piping bag or if you have like a little silicone mold, you could always um, just spoon them into that. We don't have any of those, so the best, what we decided to do was just use a piping bag and then cut the little tip off. And then you just put that on a cookie sheet or a plate with parchment paper and then you just dollop little spots all over. Then you place those into the freezer to freeze. It took about an hour to two hours to freeze. And then once they're fully frozen, you take them out and then you just um, roll them in yogurt and then place them back into the freezer. So my husband and I are both lactose intolerant. Um, so for Emerson, we used regular yogurt, but we also used the lactose-free yogurt and that works just as well. For our next treat, we went ahead and made toddler tricks. Now, this is not a specific recipe. You can definitely put in items that you like or that. Um, that you're running low on or things like that, just to mix it up. You can use ingredients that you know your toddler likes. When Emerson was younger, we would use these little Gerber puffs and mix those up with a bunch of other things that she enjoyed, um, some veggie straws, things like that. So trail mix is super easy and it's always a treat that I go to week and week again. So this week we kind of went on the sweeter route, um, gave Emerson a little bit of a treat. We try to sometimes do healthy ones, but um, this week we kind of went a little sweeter, but we did spend some raisins and yogurt covered raisins just because she does really enjoy those, but she tends to grab a whole handful and eat those, so you get the, the good mix of the bad. we start to get some of those fun fall cold days I thought about pumpkin Cheerios so this year I decided that we were gonna make some butterscotch pumpkin Cheerio bars I guess you could call them I will say these are extremely sweet so we ended up making them and then um, individually packaging them and hand them out to some the recipe is actually pretty simple all you do is you take some mini marshmallow a little bit of butter a little bit of corn syrup and then some butterscotch chips and then you just throw that into the wave and melt that until it's nice and smooth. As you see here, I did go ahead and ask Adam, my husband, to come in and help with this step. Um, one mixture is smooth, you'll start to add your Cheerios. If you can't find pumpkin spice Cheerios, this recipe works well with just the regular 
um, honey nut Cheerios. It just doesn't have as much pumpkin flavor, so I'd recommend adding a little bit more pumpkin spice. Emerson went ahead and dumped the Cheerios into the bowl, and then I had my husband go through and just stir it as we kind of kept adding enough to make it a harder consistency. Um, this part was a lot of fun because Emerson did steal a few little pieces of Cheerios as we were mixing them, which was fun for her. Once everything is all mixed up, what you'll do is you'll just pour it into a 9 by 13 pan. I did line this pan with um, parchment paper just to easier to come out of the pan once it's all hardened. Once that is all done, all you have to do is a little bit of white chocolate chips with some cinnamon until it's nice and smooth and then drizzle that on the top of this. This recipe turned out really, really good, but please keep in mind it is super rich, so you might want them into small squares. Okay, so for our last fall treat, we decided to make pumpkin oatmeal raisin cookies. I had already opened the pumpkin can for some other pumpkin recipes, so I figured we as well make something else. This was super easy to make, and it is actually pretty healthy for you. So first off, you're going to go ahead and mix your oats with your cinnamon, nutmeg, and raisins. Raisins are definitely optional, but Emerson and the family, we all love raisins, so we did put a ton of those in there. Once you have your oats and your dry ingredients mixed there, the next step that you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and mix with a mixer some softened butter and some sugar until those are creamed together. Um, I did have to scrape the bowl one time here um, just to make sure that it mixed up really well. Next you're going to go ahead and add in an egg, 
a little bit of vanilla and then your pumpkin puree and mixing that until it's completely incorporated. <laughs> Once that's incorporated, you're going to go ahead and add that whole wheat flour, baking powder, and baking soda to the mixture. You want to make sure that you don't omix here. I mixed for about 30 seconds to a minute, and then we went ahead and added our oat mixture just to buy. <laughs> Now that everything is mixed, the next step that you're going to want to do is you're just going to want to take an ice cream scoop and scoop out little balls. Um, I did end up breaking these, making these a little bit smaller. They just seemed a little bit too big for a cookie size, so we did make them about a half an ice cream scoop. And then you cook those for 15 to 18 minutes, and they turned out delicious. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this week's video. It was a ton of fun filming. Um, I absolutely just love all of the recipes that we do and I love getting Emerson involved in doing things like that. So please give me a thumbs up, like this video, add any comments down below that you have, and please stay tuned for next week's video. We have a ton of stuff in store for you. Thank you.